From bare to beautiful, Basket Case gets a full-on custom interior. JB wows us on his new machine, while LT takes care of rust the easy way. That and more today on Truck Tech. Well, there she sits, our classic 1955 Ford F100, a project that Jeremy and I originally inherited in boxes. It's now nearly complete. It's been painted, buffed, the bed floor has been assembled, and that means we're ready for the next phase of our project. Now, last time we took care of wiring, which means we can now plan out our interior. Now, as you can see, it's a bare cab right now, but by the end of the day, we hope to have fully upholstered custom seats, door panels, headliner, and carpet. We did have one problem. The 55 came to us without the factory bench seat. Not that we would have used it anyway. So, Jeremy and I road trip down to a local salvage yard to see what we could find. With over 2,000 vehicles in their inventory, Express Pull and Save in Laverne, Tennessee should be able to accommodate us. But it doesn't matter whether you're out on a mission or just killing an afternoon. Walking through an auto graveyard is one of my favorite pastimes. You know, there's so many cool things in junkyards. I could stay here all day looking for projects. It's better than going to the mall. Oh yeah, for sure. Since our F100 has been highly modified for a more modern look, a lot of seats in here. Surely some of these will fit worth checking out. Right. An original bench seat would look dated, so we'll seek out a couple of buckets. I know these Honda Accords have pretty nice seats. Let's check this one out. Yeah, that's a pretty good design. Big bolsters, get rid of the headrest. It look pretty cool, but yep, there's the issue. Usually when I'm trying to find interior parts in a junkyard, I look for a car that has the windows up. This way you know it hasn't been rained in. That's the issue with this car. Seat's starting to mold over and the foam's gotten really stiff and I think they'd just be too hard to work with, so we'll keep looking around. Aside from condition, size matters too. We'll want a fairly wide seat to fill the cab so there's little gap between the console we'll build later. Unfortunately, that's just too narrow. Too small to see. Keep looking. That's the one I'm looking for. We found a mid 2000s Nissan Altima. Nissan, huh? Wide enough, firm foam underneath, and perfect for our Ford. And at 40 bucks a piece, mission accomplished. You need a direct for you? Can you see where you're going? No, it's going to I can't see over the top. Now, one cool thing about these old trucks is there's not a whole lot of upholstery to take care of, but we still went ahead and got a little bit of a head start. We sent these seats out to Tommy Perkins, and his company is Seems Ridiculous Upholstery out in Virginia. Man, I really like how that seat came out. How'd you come up with that design? Thanks, Jeremy. After receiving the seats from you guys and speaking with you over the phone of the color scheme you were going to use on the, the paint job of the car, I went ahead and came up with these colors and added this orange thread accent to complement your orange pinstripe that you added to the, the hood and the rest of the truck. Yeah, man, I really like that orange accent. That looks really good. Now, Tommy's going to take us step by step to how to turn this junkyard seat into a showpiece. And while he does that, I'm going to take care of the door panels. Cool. Let's go. What makes this modern Nissan Altima seat work so well in a rod like this is the foam already comes stiffer, nice contours to the style of the truck. It makes for an easier foundation to start off with than starting off with an older spring style seat. I've used seats out of Tahoe's, Silverado's, I've used seats out of Volkswagen Jetta's, Escort's. Small compact car seats work better for hot rods like we're doing today. So with the seat torn apart, Tommy flips the covers inside out and makes alignment marks at each seam. Everybody has their own method to this madness. Tommy uses the alphabet to keep it all straight. These marks will be transferred to the new fabric so everything lines up correctly. The seams are split to separate the individual pieces. Now he can rebuild the patterns by first gluing them on scrim foam. Once it's trimmed, he'll trace the old pattern onto the new material, then copy over his alignment marks. The same process is done for all 15 patterns that make up the entire seat. Over at the machine, Tommy will sew a line over the top of his mark. Now this condenses the edges, making them shorter and easier to sew together. Once the excess is trimmed away, 
Witness marks are next. And Tommy calls them darts. The darts, what they do is uh, they allow me to see this line without having a mark on top of the material. That way, while I'm sewing, I can make sure that all pieces line up and everything turns out square. What design for the panels will Jeremy come up with? Find out next. We're back on Truck Tech, where our guest upholsterer, Tommy Perkins, is handling the custom seats for our F-100. Tommy owns Seems Ridiculous Upholstery in Montrose, Virginia, and at age 31, has made quite a name for himself. This WyoTech grad was honored as one of SEMA's top 35 under 35 years old, a trendsetter award for innovation in the auto aftermarket. We heard about Tommy through Detroit Muscle when they were taping this military Mustang tribute build last fall in Texas. The car was unveiled at the SEMA show, raising awareness for educational opportunities for active and veteran military personnel. After seeing Tommy's spot-on work on the Stang and hundreds of his customers' cars and trucks, we're just honored he volunteered to lend his skills to our Ford. I've probably done custom interiors on about 10 of those mid-50s uh, F-100s. What the guys have done in this truck is amazing. It's, uh, it's something I've never seen before, having the new style chassis with the new F-150 motor, turbo, all that stuff is just amazing. With the cushion and backrest covers completely sewn together, he'll reuse the listing and J-clips from the original. Then the backrest gets reassembled first. Hog rings hold the seams tight to the foam. The cover is slipped over. then attaches to the frame with plastic J-clips. For interior panels, we went to Dennis Carpenter Restoration Parts and picked up everything we need to complete our interior. Pre-made door panels, kick panels, panel for the back wall, headliner, and armrest. Now they specialize in nothing but Ford. Cars, trucks, tractors, you name it. Now this is a very inexpensive option to keep you from having to make panels from scratch out of panel board. Holes come pre-cut for the clips, window cranks, and door handles. Now you could install these in your old original truck just like they come here, or you could cover them with whatever material you like, or even add a custom touch like we're about to do. The first step is to pop the metal door clips into the door panel. I like to use the metal clips as opposed to the plastic ones because you can reuse them. You can pop the panel on the door as many times as you like. If you use the plastic clips, they're usually only a one-time deal. When test fitting, we knew we'd have to trim the panel for our aftermarket bear claw latches. So I'll pull a few measurements, then trim it out with a razor blade. Next, I'll drill a quarter inch hole for the one that got covered up when I installed the latch. Next is where a little creativity comes into play. I'm going to roughly draw out a pattern I envision for the door. Now, this can change a little bit when I cut out my templates. Nothing exact, but it gives me a pretty good uh, idea of what we want. I think it'll look pretty cool. We carpet at the bottom, dark insert. That'll work. Over at my work table, here's a little tip when your panel comes on and off a bunch of times. I like to tape down the clips. This helps to hold them in place and prevents them from ever trying to push back out on you if you happen to misalign one on the door. Now we can foam the panel. I'm using quarter inch closed cell foam for this. Trim out a piece a little bigger than the panel and spray contact cement on both the panel and the foam. Now be sure to let the glue tack for a few minutes. This helps for better adhesion. Then I'll marry the two together and trim the excess foam away with a razor blade. I'll take 180 grit sandpaper and lightly sand down the edges of the foam left from my cut marks. 
Now there are a couple of different foams you need to know about when doing upholstery like we are in our F100, and one is a closed cell foam. Now that's great for door panels, kick panels, headliners, anything like that. Now a couple of good features to it is you can actually sand the foam like we are here to get a beveled edge. Now you can also cut designs into the foam and pretty cool. Now earlier you saw Tommy using a scrim back foam. Now this is what you would use for all seat cover backings or anything you want to sew for that matter because it has this scrim backing that actually catches the threads and prevents it from pulling back through the material which you can't do in closed cell foam. And we make our insert for this panel. We use this and I'll show you how it works. Hey, I saw you with a block sander. Do you need some thousand grit or some guide coat or anything? I don't think it's coarse enough but no. how is it that everything that I do has to do with the sanding block and paper. You're good at sanding. Man. So no guide coat though. No guide coat on this one. All right. Hey, why don't you stay and help out? No. Next, rust repair the easy way. Man, that's bad. Check out this bed. It's from an 84 C10 and it's definitely seen better days. It came to us without a header panel, but that's not the worst of it. Check out this passenger bedside. It's been dented in and somebody attempted to repair it. They didn't prepare the metal very well, the filler didn't stick, and there's a bunch of little holes where they tried to pull the dent out. Now does that mean this bed is unusable? Well, no. It'd be great on like a rat rod truck or if you're after that patina look. But you actually could use this very bedside and make it back to showroom condition. It would just take a bunch of work. You'd have to start by scraping off all of this extra filler. Grind it down to bare metal, treat the surface so the rust doesn't return, add some more filler, block sand it, add some primer, and all in, you're about 20 to 30 hours worth of work. But what if I told you we could have this bed ready for paint in less than eight hours? You'd probably be interested. We know that Classic Industries sells many hard to find restoration parts for classic GM cars, but they also carry a full line for 47 through 2008 GM trucks. So we picked up a bedside and a header panel. They're made from high quality stampings and they're shipped with this protective e-coating. So they're ready to bolt on, then scuff and shoe. But we're gonna start by unbolting this bedside. This repair is really a no brainer. You don't need any body working skills at all. And for under 400 bucks plus shipping, Classic Industries really makes a repair like this affordable for the average do-it-yourselfer. With the bolts loose, I'll need to cut through two small spot welds. And then the panel can be removed. I'm going to grind down the welds and clean the seam sealer and rust from the exposed edge. Then hit the surface with some self-etching primer. Once it's dry, I can bolt on the header panel. Then the bedside. Our bedside has been 100% bolt in so far, but there were two areas that were welded from the factory. Now, do you have to replace those? Not necessarily, but you definitely should because that's what holds the side of the bed square to the floor. And as you can see, the top of ours leans in by about 3 eighths of an inch. So we're gonna correct that. A port of power will help hold it square while I make a few stitch wells. Well, there you have it. With a little help from Classic Industries, a day's worth of time and some brand new sheet metal, we were able to get rid of that old rust and have this bed ready to paint. And it wasn't even that hard. Over in the shop, Jeremy and our guest Tommy Perkins are busy finishing up the seats and trim of our 55 F100. With the design cutout of the door panel foam, the next step is to use those cutouts for the insert layer of the panel board. After they get traced, metal shears make quick work of cutting them out. All of this material and vinyl was donated to us by Three Rivers Supply in Homestead, Pennsylvania. Now the base panel gets covered with the same gray vinyl Tommy used on our seats. A two inch overlap on the cut provides some wiggle room. The best way to do this is glue one half at a time. If you tried to glue the entire piece on at once, there's a good chance you'll run into alignment problems. Using the handle of your scissors or a rounded trim tool, I'll force the material down tight where our inserts go. Now I can flip it over and start wrapping the vinyl around the panel. There's a technique I always use when covering around a square corner. 
Now, it's kind of a trade secret the pros usually keep to themselves. So if you want, go ahead and take notes. To make your corners wrinkle free, wrap one side up to the corner. Then about an eighth inch from the turn, make a cut in the shape of half a wine glass. Fold it over and cut the other half of the wine glass. Then peel it over and staple it down. Now your edges will wrap perfectly every time, wrinkle free. Now we're taking the design on the seat and transferring it onto the door panel. The white grease pencil represents my stitch line that will match the seats. My new toy is this Conso 206 RB5 sewing machine. Now this thing works great and will run as fast as 3,000 stitches per minute or slow it down like I'm doing for a stitch that's perfectly straight. It gets glued to the panel board using the same technique as before. Then it's inserted and stapled down. Now for our lower insert, we're actually going to use carpet. Now this will flow nicely into the floor with the door closed, but this isn't your typical cut or loop style carpet like you're used to seeing in today's cars. This is called Daytona carpet. It was used in the 50s and 60s on full size and muscle cars and kind of resembles a fabric, but is just as durable as today's carpets. Now I've already pre-trimmed out this piece to fit, but I don't want to leave this raw edge here. Next, sitting pretty. We're headed to the finish line on the F100 interior with only the carpet to take care of before the end of the day. Cool, that looks really good. Well, making progress. Our guest Tommy Perkins will get started on the Daytona rug provided to us by Auto Custom Carpets. Then cut out the holes for the dimmer switch and mark for the seat mounts. A good way to do this is with a block of wood and a punch. It leaves a nice clean edge as opposed to fiddling with scissors or a razor. The next step is binding the edge like we did on the door panel. Inch and a half vinyl strips lay face to face with the carpet and are sewn together. The only difference here is the vinyl wraps around the carpet. Then a stitch is run right beside the finished edge that locks it all together. The kick panels were made with the same process as the door panels. I'll tell you what, it's been a heck of a thrash these last three days, but these guys have put together a pretty awesome interior that'll definitely win some shows. Thanks, I really appreciate coming out and helping you guys with this. This was a great experience for me and I hope to do it again in the future. It was a blast. I yeah, mean, I really like this design we came up with. The carpet is definitely different and that orange, man, it accents everything. And I really enjoy doing upholstery, so having Tommy Perkins come in from Seems Ridiculous Upholstery, man, it was a pleasure, dude. Thank you. Yeah, man, you bet. Better catch that plane. Yeah, man. Thank you. If you want to put a modern DIN style radio in your 67 to 72 Chevy truck, oftentimes the post hole edges will still show up once you cut the hole. Well, Brothers Truck Parts offers this billet cover to really clean up the look. It's made of brushed aluminum and comes with the template for the cutout and all the hardware. Or if your hole's already cut, this replacement panel will get you back to stock. Visit BrothersTrucks.com. You need to consider your engine's torque output when you're selecting a clutch. You don't want to install an inadequate disc that'll slip and burn up on you, but you also don't want to overclutch and have to suffer with poor drivability. American Powertrain has clutches that'll work with stock engines and have smooth engagement, like the Super Street model, all the way up to this atomic twin that's rated to hold 1,100 pound-feet of torque. And whether you have a classic American 4-speed or a modern 5 or 6-speed overdrive, you can find a clutch that'll fit your transmission and your engine's torque output at AmericanPowertrain.com. Well, the truck's looking great, and we get a little bit closer every day. We've got our Dakota digital gauges installed, and it's a super clean setup. Just a few more things left to do, and we'll be headed down the street. Hey, hold on a second. A few? <laughs> I've been keeping track, and as long as I'm not forgetting anything, there's 25 things left to do before this truck will hit the road. So well, hopefully next time we get it in here, we'll get glass cut for it, get our pedals installed, run some brake lines, and maybe we'll make a dent in that list you've got over there. Well, at least 22. <laughs> I guess so. It's a start.